days of pitting feminism against socialism or, or Marxism are over, and that's a very good thing. I think where the problem lies was that Marx failed to actually think systematically about this question and to really theorize it and conceptualize it as a major dimension of capitalist society. He's doing when he's talking about um, the value of labor has to do with its, uh, the monetized aspect. So to, to, to leave unwaged work out of that is not exactly wrong, but if you don't explain how the wage can't simply be the wage for a single individual, if you want to have a future working class, it has to be a wage that covers the full cost of producing the worker. And that includes support for the wife, for other family members, and so on. And of course, famously, Engels of the pair is the one who really did uh, try to think systematically about this question. And I have to, having recently taught the origins of the family private property in the state in a graduate seminar, I have to say that despite objections here and there, a lot of it is pretty brilliant. Um, it's, um, the, the, he's, he's, he's very good at insisting, and I, have, I, I suspect Marx would have agreed, in insisting that socialism cannot simply mean socialized ownership of the means of production. It also has to mean the collectivization of housework and social reproduction. Engels really comes out and says that. That's a dual definition that acknowledges the centrality of what we've been calling reproductive labor alongside productive labor and the importance of developing an integrated understanding of how they intersect and co-determine one another. Now, what's important about our time is with the cutbacks to the public sector on the one hand and the recruitment of massive numbers of women into wage work on the other hand, um, there is a, a bit of a problem about where social reproduction is going on and who's doing it. I would say that today the organization of care work is dualized. On the one hand, we have people who can afford privately to pay for it. They hire typically racialized or immigrant women for rather low wages in precarious working conditions. So this is all paid care work. But again, for the working classes and the poor, they really don't have the disposable income to pay for this. So they're scrambling. Neoliberalism, this form of capitalism, this financialized, globalizing form of capitalism, has hollowed out the living standards of working people throughout the world. It has driven real wages down, 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 at the same time that a thin uh, stratum of uh, venture capitalists and uh, high-tech, uh, highly skilled high-tech people and uh, and uh, professional managerial classes are doing very well, uh, the overwhelming majority of the population is finding their living standards uh, compromised. development that essentially uh, abandoned, uh, broke up what we would call here the old New Deal coalition, abandoned the organized working class in effect without saying they were doing it, and um, uh, basically decided that their job was to placate the, the financial markets and to serve the financial market. And those um, majority liberal currents were uh, able to fit themselves quite nicely into the neoliberal worldview, which stressed modernity, openness to the globe, multiculturalism, difference, empowerment. I mean, all these buzzwords which suggest modernity. 
um, all the while leaving the overwhelming majority and masses of women, of people of color, of gays and lesbians and, and others just out there. Uh, they're all part of the working class, of course. So that's how I see it. I think to, to say that we should focus on class instead of gender or class instead of racism or, or homophobia, um, this gets everything mixed up because all of those questions of gender, and race in the United States, certainly, these are thoroughly imbricated with questions of class. These are not alternatives to class. I think every social movement has to precipitate um, a, a, a split, if you like, uh, in which we have to say we're done with the uh, crack the glass ceiling feminism. We're doing something else now. And we're done with green capitalism. And, and we're done with, uh, you know, uh, meritocratic uh, crack the whatever they would call the ceiling uh, anti racism. Um, and I've been working in the, with, with feminists, left-wing feminists, to develop what we call a feminism for the 99%. And this, so the crack the glass ceiling is the feminism for the 1%, and now we need the feminism for the 99%, and it emphasizes uh, labor rights and paid and unpaid work that women do. It emphasizes immigrants, the problems of women of color, uh, the problems of precariously employed women and so on, and it invites men uh, who share those concerns to join in. And